Good afternoon again, Danny and Chia at the ESRD Network. Today we have our staff, quality improvement staff joining us, our Andra Taylor and Maryam Alaboud, and we are going to cover the home change package. Quick reminder, the lines will be muted. The presentation is being recorded. If you have any questions, please post those questions on the chat, and we will do our best to answer those questions through the chat and also at the end of this presentation. With that, I would like to uh, ask the ball to Maryam Alaboud, who is the lead for this project. Maryam, take it away. Um, hello, everyone. Um, again, my name is Maryam Alaboud, and we're so glad to have you join us for the Home Change Package. Um, so I'm going to go over the facility selection just to get started. Um, so you all should have received a notification from us in the beginning of the month um, with a transplant and home change package preference form where we asked you which initiative would you, would you like to participate in. And as you can see, 40% of your facilities um, selected they'd that they would like to participate in the home change package. Um, we really considered your preference, but as well, we took, took a look at your overall home referral rates and your referral rates throughout the beginning of this year. So for the home change package, we've included 20% of our network service area, which included 151 facilities, and 110 of those facilities are part of the ESRD treatment choice or ETC facilities. And those facilities should already know who they are, but if you have questions about that module, you can definitely direct that towards your regional director or management. All the facilities that are included and part of the home change package are below the national average for home modalities, which is 13.79% as a national average. And we've included eight rural facilities to participate as part of this package. We did go ahead and exclude facilities that are smaller, that have a, a patient census of less than 10 patients. And we excluded facilities that have more than half of their patients over age of 65. So that way we're working with facilities that have a bigger chance for improvement. And just to give you guys some background. So as part of the president's executive order that started earlier this year, 80% um, of facility, or sorry, um, we're working on a goal to have 80% of ESRD patients going towards either a transplant or home modality. So we did start an initiative from January to October of 2020, which was the modalities QIA, and that included 156 facilities that had a focus on improving their transplant and home rates. And within that time frame, those 156 facilities were actually able to add 3,277 patients towards a home modality, and we actually exceeded the goal and reached 113%, which is really great. But as you can see over here on the chart in the right-hand side, as a network, we're still below the national average and compared to other networks. So this is a goal we really want to focus on pushing patients to go towards a home modality because we know that it's really beneficial for them and their overall long-term success with dialysis, and it could be a cost-saving benefit as well. And just taking a look at some more numbers, so in Texas, we do have about 72,000 patients, total ESRD patients, and over 54,000 of those are dialysis patients, but actually only 12% of those patients are doing dialysis in a home modality, while 88% are doing dialysis in center. So we definitely have a lot of room for improvement for those patients that are already dialysis patients. And then next slide, thank you. Um, taking a look at the incident patients, again, you see a similar percentage. Only 12% of the patients starting out are initiated in a home modality, while 85% are initiated in center. So there's a lot of room for improvement, even with patients as, if you would call it, they crash into dialysis. And as I mentioned earlier, you all received a notification with the transplant and home preference form asking you to identify your preference of which project you would like to participate in. But we also asked you some of the barriers that you guys are identifying and having with moving patients towards a home modality. So these are the results. And as you can see, most of the barriers really focus around patient 
um, factors like patients' lack of motivation, their lack of eligibility, lack of socioeconomic or financial means, and their lack of education or general misconceptions. So throughout this change package project, we're really going to be focusing the interventions around these barriers. And some of the barriers like patient's lack of motivation or family support, that's something that can also be addressed maybe at the facility level, more on a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the patients to really try to find out why they have a lack of motivation, because maybe it could be that they just have a fear of home dialysis or maybe they are just have some misconceptions about it. So that's something we're going to be working to address as well. Um, so getting into the change package intervention, some of the interventions, again, like I already mentioned, um, was the notice you all received, which include the transplant and home preference form. That was actually due on December 4th, which most of you guys completed it, but I know a couple of facilities didn't have a chance to complete it yet. So you can still go ahead and submit that to us so we can get some feedback on the barriers your facility is encountering. And of course, we're having our webinar today to kick off the change package and let you know more about the interventions. And one of the most important interventions is going to be the monthly feedback survey, which is due um, the last day of each month. And this is really important so that way you can communicate with the network, give us your feedback, and let us know if you're implementing these changes at your facility and give us, let us know if they're actually helpful or what we need to do to improve them. As far as the interventions that are going to be focused on the change package, there's going to be three main ones, and that includes the nephrologist roundtables, Universal Staff Education and Home Dialysis Heroes, and I'll get into these. So for the Nephrologist Roundtables, um, Network 14 is going to be hosting a Home Dialysis Coalition, which is going to include many different members from our network's medical review board, different home dialysis providers, regional and internal nephrologists that have, have been very successful with transitioning patients to a home modality, different home modality education programs such as AREP, which I know many of your facilities are familiar with, and other home dialysis providers and different stakeholders. So we're going to be hosting this Home Dialysis Coalition, which you'll receive more information about it after this webinar. Um, and your job as a facility is going to be to invite your medical director and nephrologist to join the conversation. We really want to have open communication um, kind of on a higher level and discussing the barriers and different best practices from surgeons and different medical providers. And as far as the universal staff education, this is something that the ESRD National Coordinating Committee or NCC, many of you are familiar with them from attending a lot of their webinars. They actually came up with these courses or modules, which are really helpful. And they're meant to raise awareness of home dialysis to in center staff. So that way we can help increase your level with and comfort level with talking about different modality options with your patients. The, model, the modules really focus on introducing the basics of peritoneal dialysis, home dialysis, and they have a focus on the benefits, myths, overcoming barriers, and your role as an in-center facility to drive patients towards home modality. So we're asking you as a network to have at least three different staff members complete these courses. And they're pretty easy. They're really informative. They're PDF courses. Um, they take about 30 minutes to read each one, so you have a choice on however you want to share these. You can either print them off as PDFs and share them with your staff, or you can, you know, maybe hold a copy meeting to have different staff and go over the courses and share them that way. But we're hoping at least each facility can have at least three staff, preferably like a social worker, maybe a nurse, and most importantly, a patient care technician complete these courses. If you can have more than one patient care technician, that would be great. Um, we really recommend that because we know that the patient care technicians get a whole bunch of time with the patient and they're able to build that relationship more on a casual level. So they could be a great um, piece to kind of get the conversation started to the patient. Have you ever thought about home? And that way they can address any barriers that the patient brings up. And of course, we put some. Oh, sorry. Can you go back for a second? Um, we put some due dates here for you just to help everyone kind of 
um, keep in track with the courses. But like I mentioned, they only take about 30 minutes to review each course. So if you want to print them all out and read over them and get them done as soon as possible, the sooner the better, because that way, you know, everyone can be educated and work towards promoting patients to go home. But those are kind of the due dates that we've set in line for you. And yeah, if you're able to click that link, Danny, like I said, they're PDF courses, so you can just print them out, but it's really important that you actually sign up and register to access the courses through that link. And it's just a quick, um, you know, a couple questions, ask for your name and email, so that way you can get your free continuing education units. By the completion of the third course, um, you'll be asked to take a quick evaluation. Oh yeah, so that's the sign up page. You'll be able to put your first and last name, your title, and once you click submit, it'll give you access to all three courses. Thank you, Danny. And yeah, so by the end of the third course, you'll be able to earn upon passing the quiz. If you've read all the material, you should be able to easily pass the quiz. You'll get free, I think it's 1.5 uh, continuing education units. Okay, so that's going to help, you know, with the staff education. And then our last intervention, the most important one, is the home dialysis heroes. Basically, the home dialysis heroes, to kind of sum it up, is going to be kind of a peer mentor. But with the home dialysis hero program, every different level or facility kind of has a role in making the program come together. So the ESRD network has a role, the in-center facility has a role, the home dialysis facility has a role, and of course the home dialysis hero and peer mentee has a role. So as a network, we have a patient advisory committee of highly engaged and motivated patients, and we've identified a few of them to be our home dialysis heroes. So what we're going to do with them as a network is host virtual webinars, um, podcasts and different events to address the myths, fears, and pros and cons on a home dialysis and to kind of foster communication from a patient to patient level. So our first call, our first home dialysis hero call, it's going to be an interactive call. It's going to be January 12th of 2021. Sorry, it says 2020. And it's going to be at 1.30. And again, you'll receive information and a little flyer about that after the webinar. So just, you know, try to look out for that call, invite your patients and get your patients excited about the interactive call. But your job as an in-center facility will be to try to recruit at least one home dialysis hero by the end of this month. And a home dialysis hero, like I mentioned, is just someone who has been successful, who has been successful in home dialysis, or it could even be someone who's tried home dialysis, maybe decided it wasn't for them and, you know, maybe they did home dialysis and went to transplant. It could be anyone that you think has good information that they could help support their peers to move towards home dialysis. Okay, so those were the three main interventions, but of course you can always find extra resources and tools about home that we've created with our patient advisory committee on our website. So these tools are always going to be here for you and they feature different videos, different comparative tools and tools from the NCC as well. And as a network, we've created the patient portal. Our patient portal has many different resources and videos to highlight different healthcare topics, um, including upcoming events, COVID, of course, going to home and going, um, going to get a or journey to transplant. So we really recommend that you share the patient portal with your facilities. We have a flyer, which again, you'll receive after the webinar, but this can also be, you know, if patients know how to scan a QR code, they can easily visit it on their phone and bookmark the portal. And this is something we really, you know, promote to facilities. I believe you all should have received a poster as well within your facility. So if patients scan that QR code, they can see the portal on their phones as well. And to help you keep track of all these different requirements and resources, we've actually created the transplant and home change package portal. So um, are you able to pull up the portal, Danny? All the resources and, okay. All the different resources and requirements of this QIA, including all the topics that we've addressed in today's webinar, they'll actually be available on this portal. So as you can see, it has two sides, the home side and the transplant side, but you'll only be responsible for things in the home change package size, which will always be in yellow. But as you can see at the top, it has our contact information, 
And if you scroll down, you could see that it has our upcoming events, different due dates that are available. And then you can see the highlight of the three main interventions, including the nephrologist roundtables, universal staff education, and the home dialysis heroes. And then it gives you a summary about each different topic right here. And then, like I mentioned, here's the courses. So we've provided um, the PDF copies of each course. So if you wanted to access them that way, you definitely can access them here. But just make sure you use that link to sign up on their website. So that way you could get the continuing education units. And then, you know, towards the bottom, there's the patient portal. And most importantly, the monthly feedback survey is down here at the very bottom, which again, it's due by the last day of the month, but it's really meant for as soon as you complete the activities, you can go ahead and get it done. And we've made it a pretty short survey for you guys. It's really just meant to give us feedback so we can better tailor the interventions. And if you continue scrolling down, if you continue scrolling down, um, you, you'll always find other resources, like I mentioned, more flyers we've created with our patient advisory committee and just other resources, and sometimes we'll link videos down here. So we recommend that you share this link with anyone that will be involved in the project, have them bookmark it in their page, so that way it's easier for your staff to communicate amongst each other about the change package project. And you'll receive a link to our portal um, in an email after this webinar, but also it is linked on our ESRD website um, network page if you're used to going to that. I don't know if you have our network website pulled up, Danny. Yes, one moment. But yeah, so that's the portal. It's just going to be always getting updated. Um, you can always just check it if you want to see, oh, what do I have to do next? or something like that, just to give you a quick view, you can check there and it'll have all the videos posted, all the different images, so that way it could be a little bit more interactive for your facility staff. And if you're used to going to our website, our ESRD website, it's also linked there. So if you scroll down and then go to the quality improvements, activities, or QIA, and then at the very top here, you'll see once it loads. <laughs> yeah, at the very top, you'll see here um, the home and transplant change package portal. So that's another way if you just click on that going back to you icon, you can access it right there on the picture. Yeah, if you click there, you'll be able to access the portal. That's one way you can access it. Um, and then also, if you scroll down, you'll have more, you'll see where it says modalities QIA, where you'll be able to have um, all the other different resources. If you just prefer the traditional website, if you're used to going to it that way, all the resources will be listed here as well. And yeah, and you can see it's separated. So we have all the other resources all these different resources that you can use, but the main change package resources are listed right there with the universal staff education and the different things you can do to promote the home dialysis hero. And so, thank you, Danny, for that um, website view. So yeah, just going back to the slides, just to sum it up, we really wanna focus on you know, improving our rate because we are as a network below the national average and home modality is something that's very beneficial to patients. And I believe they did a survey asking nephrologists if they had to crash into dialysis, which modality would they choose? And it was like 86% of them said that they would want to go to home modality. So if our nephrologists are picking this for themselves, we definitely want to promote this to our patients because it's just very beneficial. It gives them the freedom of choice, freedom of life, a lot more time, and it increases their appetite and overall health. So by pushing the nephrologist roundtables, assigning a home dialysis hero, and using that universal staff education, we really feel that we can um, see a lot of change and see a lot of patients moving towards home modality. I believe that pretty much sums it up. So if you guys do have any questions, um, our contact information is here. You can always email myself, Miriam Alaboot, or give me a call. Either way will be fine. Or you can also reach out to Arlandra Taylor. She'll be assisting in this project as well. Um, and if you have questions right now, um, you can definitely put them in the chat and um, we can get to them. Danny, I don't know if you're able to see yes, all the I questions. Am, 
Can you see the chat or do you want me to look through the chat and pull up some questions? Um, let me take a look at the chat really quick. I see someone asked, will we get the slide deck to get the links? Yes, the slide deck will be emailed um, shortly after this. So you'll have all the links in there as well as the link to the portal if that makes it easier for you. Someone says, how do I recruit a home dialysis hero if I don't have any patients that have any experience or positive experience? My facilities are in center hemodialysis only. So what we recommend for that is partnering with a home dialysis facility. That's a kind of a really important step. If you can maybe reach out to a home dialysis facility or even as a network, we can help you reach out to a home dialysis facility and maybe they have a home dialysis hero that could possibly, you know, connect with one of your patients to become a peer for them. But like I mentioned, also as a network, we're going to be hosting different virtual support groups or sorry, interactive calls and kind of like a virtual support groups with our home dialysis heroes from our PAC members. So they'll be able to speak to your patients as well. They can kind of be a home dialysis hero for your patients. But if you can kind of try to maybe do some outreach or see if, you know, you can connect with a home dialysis facility that can help out, that would be great as well. Thank you, Maryam. Uh, to add to that, yes, that is a great recommendation. And just a reminder that CMS, even if you don't have a home program or a sister facility, CMS uh, requires and encourages facilities to continue to refer patients to uh, work with other local uh, home dialysis programs because the patients have a right to choose uh, their modality. And if your facility is not able to offer that, then finding what's best for the patient is uh, the expectation that CMS has. Uh, but yes, yeah, so to help with that also, like Miriam mentioned, we will be hosting these uh, monthly calls with our uh, patient advisory committee members who are experienced uh, in different modalities. And uh, that will be another option for you guys to refer patients to attend and participate during these interactive uh, events so that they can hear from the network and from other patients as well. So this is something that we're doing uh, to help you guys uh, meet that part of the goal. Thank you, Danny. And then I see another question. Is the home dialysis hero supposed to be a PD patient? Um, it can be any type of home patient, like a home hemo, or I know there's nocturnal patients or PD patients. It could be any kind of patient that's had success in using a home program that can pass along the message and just kind of be a peer for another patient that's kind of iffy about home dialysis. So whatever encouragement they can provide, if you feel like they're a talkative patient or someone that could be a good mentor, they would be a great choice for a home dialysis hero. Um, I see another question that says, will the MDs be notified of the roundtables directly? Um, the MDs will not be notified directly. We do have some of your MD contacts from that facility personnel update, which thank you, thank you to a lot of you for completing that. Um, we can notify some of them that way, but as a facility administrator, we'll probably notify you, send you a little flyer, and it will kind of be your job to pass along the message to your MDs, nephrologists, and other people that you think you know would be helpful for them to join. Um, I see another question here it says, so I just need to identify a home patient who would be willing to talk to my patient about their different options, regardless if they're not at my center. Yeah, that's kind of the point. We kind of want to create a big virtual support group type of thing because we know with COVID and the pandemic, you can't really have just in-center lobby days. So we want to take this virtual. So it could be someone outside of your facility, within your facility, or like I said, or like we said earlier, they can join our virtual support group and hear from our home dialysis heroes. And maybe by joining our support group, they decide, you know, they know someone else that wants to join as well. Um, I believe that's all the questions in the chat. Let me see if we have anything in the Q&A. Yeah, in the meantime, if you, somebody asks, how do I know if I'm in the home or transplant? Uh, mm -hmm. Probably the easiest way is to send us an email if you haven't received one. You should have received, your facility should have received a notification stating uh, whether you are in the home or the transplant project. But if you haven't, for whatever reason, just uh, send us an email and we will be able to tell you which project your facility is enrolled in. And, uh, and yes, also, 
like Danny mentioned, you can send us an email, but also you will receive notifications. So in addition to having um, the portal, which has all the interventions and stuff listed, you'll also continue to receive notifications via email to your facility administrator and project lead. And if you would like to assign a star PCT or a star patient care technician that can also be a part of this project, we highly recommend that as well. And, you know, that can be an option for you so we can email some email them the some of the resources as well. I do see one of the questions here that says due to COVID, we're not allowing non patients into the facility. How do we connect the patient heroes that aren't in the facility? Yes, exactly. So due to COVID, um, you know, it's put a lot of restrictions on us, but we really want you guys to try to think outside of the box and engage patients in different ways. Um, and the guide, there will be a guide that is linked in this webinar, but also on the portal and that will be emailed to you as well that can help you guys find different ways to help the home dialysis hero and the peer mentee connect, including maybe via social media or FaceTiming or just even a phone call, just having another patient that they could talk to and tell them simple things like, oh, I'm scared about doing it. Maybe it's a lot of work. It's a lot of supplies. Just simple questions, having another patient who's been through it, it might be easier for them to hear it rather than just having the facility staff telling them about home dialysis. And then I see another question, were these numbers for 2019? Um, I'm not sure which numbers you're referring to. Were you referring to the charts of the prevalent and incident patients? Yes, they were from throughout the year from 2019, but they were pulled in May 2020. And they just kind of reflect on how our overall patient population was doing. Um, I think that's all the questions I'm able to see. I don't know if there's any that I missed, Danny. Uh, no, I think you addressed them all. Um, I don't see anything else. Uh, if there are any questions, if for whatever reason we missed uh, one of your questions, please send us an email or give us a call. Uh, any of us, uh, either Miriam, Arlandra, or myself, will be happy to talk to you. And again, a reminder that uh, I know you guys are busy. We appreciate everything you do. And uh, but also everything we do is for the patients. We're passionate just as you guys are to work with these patients and give them the options that they deserve. And a lot of times they don't even know exist. So that's important and we are here to help. We are a team with you guys. We have the same goals. So feel free to give us a call anytime. Uh, you can always send us an email too. If for whatever reason you can get through the phone, uh, send us an email and we will get to it um, as soon as we can. Other than that, um, this is going to be posted in the next couple of days, the recording as well as the slides. You should be getting an email from us soon uh, and with uh, more information and uh, the links to access the different uh, materials and resources that were presented today. Uh, so again, I just want to thank you for your time. Uh, appreciate everything you guys do and feel free to reach to us if you need anything. Thank you. Thank you.